Welcome to Let's Build a Willie's Jeep. We are getting this Jeep ready to go for summer 2022. It's getting close and we're going to teach you guys how to install the rear drive shaft or it can be called a propeller shaft and that will be located underneath here and that will attach to the rear axle right here and then it will attach to the emergency brake which is located on the transfer case. There are a few components to this install. There is the physical rear drive shaft right here. It's been fully rebuilt and freshly painted, looking all spiffy. There's also these components right here that have to be installed as well. And they are the splicer style drive, drive shaft universal joints, which are these right here, which will attach to this right here and slide on, on like that and then rotate on like that just make sure you don't lose all the bearings in there just be careful they don't fall out on you there's also going to be these clamps that'll hold on these rear bearings to the uh, rear axle on the rear pinion shaft yoke and they'll also have to be some multi-purpose high temperature grease used because these are pretty high wear areas. We are now underneath the Jeep to get a better sense of where this rear drive shaft is gonna go. It's gonna connect this rear yoke right here. It's attached to the axle. And the other side will be attached to the emergency brake onto these four studs that are coming out of the emergency brake. It's important that you have the rear drive shaft orientated in the right direction. So you want to have it so this larger bracket with these four holes will attach to the emergency brake side or the transfer case side. And this side will attach to the rear axle yoke. The first step is to loosen all these four nuts on these studs so we can install one part of the rear drive shaft. Before you put on the rear drive shaft, you have to make sure that you torque this big nut right in there, in the center right there that attaches the emergency brake on. And it has to be torqued to uh, 65 foot pounds. And we'll get that started right now. You use this big torque wrench right here. And then I use a crowbar wedged in between the yoke in the back here like that against the ground. And then when you torque this side, it'll put pressure downwards onto the crowbar and that'll allow you to torque the nut. With your torque wrench set to 65 foot pounds, use a inch and an eighth socket and put it onto the nut and torque the nut with the torque wrench now placed on the nut, put downward pressure on the torque wrench until so you hear that click. And now you know that it is properly torqued to 65 foot pounds. And now we can continue with the drive staff install. And you better make sure you torque this nut because you can't torque it after you put the rear drive shaft on. And in case you're doing a big overhaul like we are, and you replace the emergency brake, don't forget to torque that nut. Now with the rear drive shaft, and you make sure you have the proper end facing towards the emergency brake, which is the end I'm holding right now, and this will just slide onto the studs on the emergency brake. The rear drive shaft is now installed onto the studs, and now you have to put on your lock washer and your nut. Once you have one not just to hold it, make sure you pull these studs out all the way because they're, they're actually bolts and they have to be set in the little groove in the back. You just pull on it and you can see until it kind of locks and you know it's pulled back and set properly. Now install the rest of the lock washers and nuts on all four bolts.
using a small torque wrench, now torque these nuts between 20 and 30 foot pounds. And I have it set to 25 foot pounds, which is just in the center. And now torque these nuts. The next step is to pack these splicer style drive shaft universal joint bearings with some multi purpose high temperature grease. And we'll just work in the grease into these bearings until there's a nice light coating in both of these. Also put a light coat of grease on to these ends as well. Next step is to slip on both of the bearings. And it glides nicely, just give it a quick check. And now apply a light film of grease along this as well. And do the same thing for the bottom. In addition, put a light coating of grease on the rear axle yoke into these slots right here. Put a light coating of grease onto these two clamps as well. Now it's time to line up the rear drive shaft with the yoke on the, the rear axle. Now we just have it so it's flat, so your bearings don't fall out, and make a big mess everywhere. And now you just slide these bearings into these little grooves right here on the yoke. Then we'll put a clamp over the bearing and we'll put uh, two bolts on each side and then we'll torque it. Make sure the bearings are fully seated in and now just lift it onto here and set it into the yoke. Like that. And now you put the clamp on top of your bearing. The clamp will go on like this. Now you turn on your two bolts on each side of the clamp. Just do enough to hold it and then work on the other side now. And each bolt has a lock washer. Don't make sure you don't forget about your good old lock washer. Do the same step on the other side. Now with all the bolts set, I will tighten them up with a socket and then we will torque them. Using a small torque wrench, torque these bolts between 15 and 18 foot pounds. And I'll just set it to 15 foot pounds and now torque all these bolts. Mm -hmm. 